Exponents and their properties. We begin this section with a review of the set of all real numbers, better known as the real line. As can be seen from the diagram, the real line can be broken up into several parts. So let's start on the left and proceed to the right. If we start with a set of all real numbers, we find that we can subdivide them into rational numbers and irrational numbers. Now, a rational number is any number that can be written as one whole number divided by another whole number. The irrational numbers are numbers that cannot be written as one whole number divided by another whole number. And there are several very important and very famous irrational numbers like pi or e or the square root of 3 or the square root of 2 or the square root of 17. Anything with a radical in it is an irrational number. Now, the rational numbers could further be subdivided into the set of all integers and the set of all non-integer rational numbers. From this, we can make a very important generalization, and that is that all integers are rational numbers, but all rational numbers are not integers. Now, the set of integers could be further subdivided into the set of negative integers and the set of whole numbers. The negative integers are you know, minus 1, minus 2, minus 3, etc. And the whole numbers start from 0, 1, 2, 3. The whole number is again further subdivided into the natural numbers, 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5, and the number zero. It's important here to distinguish that the number zero is not one of the natural numbers. The natural numbers are used to count how many things. We do this because our goal is to study exponential functions of the form a raised to the power x, where a is called the base and x is a real number. We recall that if r is a rational number, then we can write r in the form r equals m divided by n. a to the power r, therefore, equals a raised to the power m divided by n, which equals the nth root of a raised to the power m. We use this fact to calculate things like the following. 32 raised to the power 2 over 5. That is the fifth root of 32 raised to the power 2. Now, the fifth root of 32 is equal to 2. So when we raise the fifth root of 32 to the power 2, we get 2 squared, which equals 4. Similarly, if we look at 125 raised to the power negative one-third, that is equal to 1 over 125 raised to the power positive one-third, which is equal to 1 over the cube root of 125, which equals 1 over 5. But how do we evaluate a number like 5 raised to the power square root 3? Here we have to approximate the square root of 3 to a rational number. And we can use an approximation like 1.7, 1 1.73, 1 1.732, etc., etc. The closer the approximation is, the more accurate the result. It can be shown, although it is beyond the scope of this college algebra course, that all the rules 
and theorems associated with rational exponents also apply to real exponents. The properties are summarized below. For any real number a that's greater than zero and a not equal to one, the following statements are true. Number one, a raised to the power x is a unique number for all values of x. Number two, if a raised to the power b is equal to a raised to the power c if and only if b equals c. That follows from property one. Because property one says a raised to the power x is unique, which means there's only one of it. Therefore, if a raised to the power b is equal to a raised to the power c, b must be equal to c. Property three, if a is greater than one and m is less than n, then a raised to the power m is less than a raised to the power n. And property four, if a is a fraction, that is, if a is greater than zero and less than one, and m is less than n, then a to the m is greater than a to the n. Example one, given that f of x is equal to three raised to the power x, and g of x is equal to one fourth raised to the power x, find g of negative three and f of 1.34 and graph each function. Solution, since g of x is equal to one fourth raised to the power x, then g of negative three is one fourth raised to the power negative three. Now one fourth raised to the power negative three is one over one fourth raised to the power positive three. So g of negative three is one over one fourth raised to the power three, which equals four raised to the power three, which equals 64. Now to evaluate f of 1.34, f of 1.34 equals three raised to the power 1.34. And for that, we turn to the calculator. If you have a graphing calculator, if you and evaluate three raised to the power 1.34, the answer you would get is 4.35855. Now we take a look at these two functions. The blue graph represents the function y equals 3 raised to the power x. And if we look at this graph, we see that this function, 3 raised to the power f, is always increasing in its domain. Its domain is negative infinity to, to, plus, to positive infinity, and x is always increasing, which tells us that that function has an inverse. When we look at the red graph, which is the function y equals 1 fourth raised to the power x, we see that this graph whose base one fourth is a fraction, this graph is always decreasing on its domain. And again, its domain is negative infinity to positive infinity. Seeing that this graph is always decreasing on its domain, we conclude that this function, y equals one fourth raised to the power x, has an inverse because it is one to one. We will go on to see what the inverse of these functions are later on in this series.